It's her doll. I'm Dave. I'm Curtis. Welcome back to the 12 days of beer here on, here the, on the Snack Network. Uh, every day leading up to the Christmas holiday, we taste beer. Uh, Curtis's turtle. camera is doing a thing with a turtle. I like my turtle. I got this from a really from a bar that was like certified to serve Guinness. Like they had a plaque and everything. And I was drinking out of this cup because each one of their cups has one of the, the Guinness animals. Out. There's like a toucan, a turtle, and there's a few others that I don't remember. Um, but I, I looked at the lady. I'm like, can I have this glass? I really love turtles. She's like, dude, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> dude, um, you could take the plates with you. I wouldn't say a damn thing. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, so a 25% tip for you, maybe right. 30. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's how I got this glass. I'm not a thief. I asked. You asked. And I was that they I don't give a fuck. You were told you were told by someone who has no authority. That hey, they, they have authority. They they brought me all my food. They served my my beer. It was authority. I will leave the bar and person unnamed. Anyway, we're here anyway, to this new Christmas beer. This is a Great Lakes. Christmas ale, but I think there's something more special. Yes, it's barrel aged. Okay, so here's the thing about this. Uh, last July, and by last July, I mean 2021. The July 2021. They did a, a Christmas in July barrel aged limited run where they sent like every store in Cuyahoga County like one case oh, of, like, of like six. And they were in these big glass bottles. We did it on the channel, but we did it about we did it about six months later. I did it with uh, French Ben, and uh, it was it was really good actually. So mm-hmm. my previous experience with Great Lakes Christmas Ale is that it was not very good. That on the other hand was good. It was also eight percent. This is eight percent. This might so be I, the same thing. I yeah. What I'm curious is if it's the same brew or like the same concept brew, just you know, can probably. I've had a lot of good experiences with beers i already like being barrel aged and then coming out in limited releases there's um a mommy bay uh it's like total eclipse or something that's barrel aged i happen to get some of like the last of it blew my mind so good um so i have high expectations for this i i do too actually based on liking it last year mm-hmm. All right, so, so let's gonna... crack it oh, here, wait, we'll get that real fully work hold on that was not that great. Ooh. I had already kind of cracked it a little bit. That smells like really good cinnamon chocolate. That smells familiar, actually. I'm bringing it up to the camera to do my poor thing. Don't fall. Don't fall. I, gonna say I poured quite a head on that. I went a little oh, bit. Oh, there we can go. I went a little Johnny Casino. Now I'm supposed to sit here for like six minutes and wait for that head to go down. I got it just enough. Yeah. Right that, out of the lip. There's a little bit of like stink. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the smell. It's um, it's like chocolatey. It smells sweet. I get like floral notes in it. Ooh, I'm excited yeah, for this. I don't know I'm loving that smell. I'm going to be totally honest with you. It smell. Smell is not always what a beer tastes like. But it's part of taste. What is it like a 80-20 in terms of taste and smell? I it, There was something that came up the other day, and I don't remember what it was now, where I was like, wait, that doesn't smell like anything. How does it have a taste? And I can't remember what it was, and now it's going to drive me crazy. Hmm. As I stall. My head cheers. A little bit. Okay, cheers. Oh, you're trying to, you want to stall some more? Do you need to stall some more? Oh, okay. No, I went for it. Ooh, okay. There's a lot in that. Okay, so I'm like the last beer. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. It's sweet. It's got a nice like spice to it. It's also got that bourbon esque. Uh, I, I I'll say this: it's it's the best possible read of the burnt flavor of the barrel, right? Like that that uh that smokiness. It's a it's so good. It's 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 a complex, mm-hmm. delicious, real treat Christmas ale, and that's. Oh, yeah. Like the last two that we've had, or the last couple we've had, where there was like just it was like so basic. Uh, this is not that. This is go ahead. 
Oh, I was going to say, I wonder what kind of bourbon barrels they use because this this has notes of a bourbon I'm, I feel like I've had before, but I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. versed in bourbon enough. I was going to say, I've had a few bourbons in my life, only a few, and uh, in my experience, they've all been too similar for me to start nailing down my, my variations in bourbons. <laughs> So one that I like is uh, I like Maker's Mark. It's the most one of the most popular ones out there. Obviously, everybody's going to enjoy it. It's a good bourbon, but it's it's very it's one of their smoother, like one of the smoother ones in the world. This has that smoothness. And I would be curious if they used like a similar bourbon of something to Maker's or like some derivative. Um, but I'm not that good at that. I don't, kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know if Great Lakes has their own bourbons. Oh. Now that would be cool if you could. So this is probably a possibility. And I'm, I think that would be also really cool if you could distill from a beer brew to make a bourbon. I'm pouring the last little bit of this can in this cup. Oh, gotcha. uh, I have. You look so I focused. Have, yeah. And no, I just was like, don't spill it on your desk. Don't <laughs> uh, this, I like this one a lot. Same. I may have preferred that I had left it in the can to make it a little easier to sip. Maybe not get all the flavors and the taste there, but that would have been just a more likely that I sit here and drink this 8% beer late at night. <laughs> like, I'm probably going to go sit down, read my book and, uh, and drink this. I've been re reading. I've been getting into randomly historical fiction okay, or historical nonfiction. Okay. That's uh, so real stuff. Real uh, with real stuff yeah and so weird thing about me i like the story of chernobyl and uh the nuclear meltdown of reactor four did you watch that documentary i think it's yes. on netflix that like four-part documentary and yes. i think it's wild that it is, is wild <laughs> so one of my main uh one of my final projects in my undergraduate was about chernobyl and i got to do so much research on it i i absolutely i don't know why it's so interesting but because I think I just oh, you wonder why anybody still lives there. You oh, wonder nobody, nobody lives there. It's in the exclusion zone. Yeah. Well, okay. There's a, there's a serious, there's an area around it. Yes, that's completely yes. cut off. But why did people stay for so long? Like, because they didn't know. Cause no one knew like this. No one told them, dude, the first responders didn't weren't told they were like, Oh, it's just a fire. It's like, no, you it there. It's death. You yeah. walk there, you're dead. The first, the first like few trucks of firemen all died, like within like good thirty minutes, like they were done. Radiation will mess you up. It's insane. Yeah, it's and insane. they did just uh finish the new sarcophagus for uh, Reactor Four, which is good. Um, so it's like this big concrete vessel that was, I think, rolled over the sarcophagus or over the reactor to replace the previous sarcophagus that was. Right. dilapidating and such but it's so pretty it looks so nice it's a really great project uh, i'm glad they were able to do that but it's such a crazy story of how it came to be in like such a disaster but i think i just like historical disasters and i like learning how we got there but i hate i hate everything about how that played out too mm -hmm. like, like the cause like yeah. Yeah. It was it was basically the problem that's leading to every single problem we still have. Yeah. And like yet we we were having this this level of cheapness mm -hmm. when we were talking about something extremely dangerous. Yeah. We were still trying to be corporate greed bullshit. <laughs> yeah, the amount of just going through the the book, it's really good. It's called Chernobyl Stories, I believe. Um, I'd have to look up what the author is, but I'll I'll tell on the next the next day. Um, great book. It's written very well. Uh, I can only imagine how good the audiobook is, oh, but yeah, right. it's, it's just a matter of like understanding why the reactors were made different, how they had to like legitimately rebuild cement because it was so low quality from the Soviet union in that time frame. And it's like, you're going from like the bare, like building component of cement is not to code enough. Right. And you're yeah. building a freaking nuclear reactor. <laughs> yeah. no. Insane. 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 And yet, and yet, how little people care. And also, fun fact about it: the uh, nuclear reactor uh, model that was built over reactor one through four was never tested in prototype. It went straight to production. They were like, "This works in theory." Done. 
Yeah, we have and friends, engineers, who would say that's insane. Oh, that's in that's so st- in any sense of that yeah. same word. Like you, there's your first iteration is never good to go, Ever. and if it is, like maybe you found an egg, and that it's like ah egg, and even that <laughs> the entire thing was experimental, really. Oh, absolutely, it's like, like needle really- in a haystack. It's insane. It's oh god. Anyway. On a much more positive note. Oh, this beer is delicious. This beer is delicious, Great Lakes. Sorry, yeah. I, I got into that book and I got into historical fiction. I finally found a genre of book I really enjoy. Yeah. I I need to get on Laura's podcast again. I don't know if Laura's still doing it, but go check out Laura's library. Oh, yeah, Laura's library card. Shout out to Laura. She's awesome. She reads a lot of books. Yeah, lots more books than I've ever read in my entire life. <laughs> in one week so she's a fast reader she claims she not to be toes. but she's like i read these 17 books this month I'm like okay yeah. <laughs> like great I, I forget if she does audiobooks or not uh, i think a little bit but i think it's mostly actual reading which is wow which is impressive anyway it's, yeah also impressive great oh, like this beer. Beer. bourbon christmas so ale fun. I, I I would be willing to bet this is a very similar, if not the same attempt recipe brew, whatever you want to call it, at that same Christmas in July ale they did a few years ago. I'll look up afterward if it's the same barrels or not. I don't want to type during this. It's going to sound like shit. Yeah, yeah no, I don't. I don't know. If, I wouldn't say maybe it's exact same barrels, but like same concept you know like like basically like this worked let's do it again yeah so let's, absolutely let's do, let's do it in a bigger quantity sell people these probably came in four packs yeah they were four packs would be my guess originally mm-hmm. uh and then it singled out by special retailers yeah or a case broke or a couple of cases broke and they had to single them out or whatever this, this is the christmas ale that i'd recommend you buy in the four pack this is the one we deserve yeah, this is this is the one you want. This is the one that I would start with. Yeah. And as your base for really enjoying a Christmas ale with a lot of flavor, although I would never say this should be your first beer ever. No, not, you're not ready for this. But if you if you're already used to it, you're already ready for the flavors, the complexities. There are notes of chocolate, there are floral notes, there are spices, there are it's there's so layers. It's there's good. So- it just keeps building and it makes it so great. If you're into bourbon, though, I would say this would be a good transitional beer from bourbon to beer. Yes. It's a great in-between. Although th- I think you'd be working your way up to bourbon. If, mm-hmm. you're, if you're going that direction, this this is where you start and then you go to bourbon. I mean, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> the way you said it was start at bourbon and work your way down to this. Really yeah, fun. you know, you're a bourbon ga- a bourbon person. You want to get you want to get into beer. You know, you want to start drinking Bud Light. <laughs> Start, start with this. Anyway, start it hard, hard bourbon. They just they cranked the hard level up to like very hard at like suicide levels, and they're from like, there all right, go, the game from, I'm playing. From there, you go to whiskey, okay? And then once <laughs> once you get to whiskey, you get to straight. Oh gosh, what is it? What's it called? Um, rye? Or... No, 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 no. The Everclear. You go to Everclear. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just drinking ethanol at that point then, Jeez, and once you've dr- once you've drank that you're ready to work your way down to the- <laughs> you're ready for some flavor i've never actually had everclear you don't need to i don't need to i don't really want to it doesn't seem it was close enough when we hit 100 subscribers and we did the 100 proof smeared off <laughs> That's close enough, to be honest. It tastes hey. just as bad. Hey, we finished that this year. That we did. We're coming up on a thousand. We're coming up on one. Oh, no, day. we have. There's a thousand videos. Oh, no, I meant uh, subscribers. Oh, we we're, are. We're getting real close. We popped in like there was it was 900. And then all of a sudden it became 915. I'm like, ooh, hoo, we're going to hit that one. We're going to hit four digits. That's next, huge. Next year, for sure. Next year would have been. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. But if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Come on. If we hit a thousand before the end of the year, that would be crazy. I mean, we have seen currently. We only have like two weeks left as of this video going up. But like, it's hey, I believe in you. Let's do it. We taste to it. We taste new things almost every single day so that you don't have to. I'm Dave. I am Curtis. This was the Snack Network 12 Days of Beer. We'll be back tomorrow.
for another Christmas beer for you. And some stories. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, uh, our, our, uh, we'll just work on our scale of working your way down from the hardest <laughs> we can think of all the way down to the lightest Bud Light we can think of. You start with Everclear first. You come, to, or no, you start with like a 15 year Yagavulin and you work your way down. You work, uh, you start with like a $600 whiskey <laughs> and it gets all the way down to, to Bud Light. <laughs> Then you just start drinking water again. <laughs> and you, then you move to seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And then shel- seltzer with sugar. <laughs> <laughs> seltzer with Splenda. And simply spiked. <laughs> yeah. Just juice. <laughs> just spiked juice. <laughs> spiked juice. Oh, oh goodness right. gracious. Play us out, Adam. This is Snack Network. <laughs> It's the Snack Network Oh, I tried, I tried, and I tried to find Something that I could rhyme With the Snack Network But there's literally nothing There's not a thing that you can rhyme with it